go to uh, Nick. Can you hear me? Yep, can hear now. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask a question. Maybe maybe this is a, a topic for a show because it was straight for time. Um, I wanted to ask about the $10 trillion man. Do you know who that is? No. That's, uh, they call, that's uh, Larry Fink because he controls $10, million, $10 trillion worth of Black assets. Rock. I've talked about Black Rock. So, Black Rock. Yeah. Yeah. So no, but he's pushing his ES. The reason I'm I brought him up is because he's pushing his ESG agenda, yes, he his is. version of ESG uh, with sustainable investing, what he calls sustainable ev- investing. So yeah. you, you know, I thought it'd be a good show to cover the various flavors of ESG. Uh, if there are any, uh, you know, palatable ones, they're all horrific. But uh, you know, the one, you know, he's got tremendous influence. He has 139 sustainable ETFs. Uh, he's just huge. He's in equity fixed income yep. Uh, yep. and he's pushing it hard. And, and he yep. got raked over the coals the other day on MSNBC for his hypocrisy with his relationship with China. So, uh, well, you know, of I mean, about- to be, to be a, a, a so-called conscious investor, responsible, you have to be a hypocrite. Because there's no way to do it. Uh, it's it's a, it's an impossible task the way they've set it up. I'm giving a talk on ESG. When am I giving the talk? Uh, yes, on Tuesday, the 26th, a week from today, at Columbia University. I mean, it'll be on Zoom, so you'll be able to watch it. I'll stream it live. It'll be on ESG mandates and capitalism. Uh, the role, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how I take it. But yeah, BlackRock is a, a, a big issue with this. Um, we can talk about why BlackRock even exists, why, how it could be a $10 trillion fund. Uh, but let me, let me just leave you with this. Funny thing is that if you look at the, all those sustainable portfolios that BlackRock claims are ESG, and you compare them to just regular diversified portfolio of stocks, the overlap is unbelievable. So you can make anything ESG if you're willing to be a hypocrite and you're willing to, you know, it's a marketing tool right now more than anything else, but, but uh, it, it's also a, a way to undermine capitalism. It's also a way to undermine the profit motive and a way to undermine the idea of shareholder wealth maximization as a goal for the for a corporation. So it's Is a there very an anti-ESG thing. fund? What's Is that? Is there an anti-ESG fund? Not it's as just far as maybe almost, that just focus focuses on the governance all uh, the, side. All the, all the funds that are actually there to make money are anti-ESG funds. <laughs> they give you the best returns. Yeah. yeah. It's just like the tobacco industry. It's 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 the biggest uh uh no, it's it, it, over the last 40 years, it has showed uh, the best returns. Yeah. Uh, uh, because they do share buybacks and uh, they increase their dividends. Share and buybacks give- and dividends are not what cause returns, but you know we can do that another time. What cause returns is 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 the free cash flow they generate. They generate a lot of money. How they choose to distribute that money to shareholders does not determine the returns. Share share, share buybacks do not affect returns long term. So how how are the free cash flow yields that high then? The cash flow yields are high because the profit margin is very high. They have very little to invest in. They have no R&D. They, and, and because of the government restricts competition for tobacco, they have basically a kind of a duopoly or monopoly over it. So they rake in money. They, they make a fortune. And most of the money comes from overseas because they don't sell that many cigarettes in the U.S. But it's, it, okay. it's good to be in an industry where the government does not want competitors because then... Right. Okay, so there's other, fa- but but are there many flavors of ESG in your mind? Yeah, the the yes, yes. I mean, so maybe it, you can cover that one. Day. Every single ESG fund has its own flavor because there's no objective way to determine what ESG is. So it's a moving target, in other words, constantly, and everybody interprets it the way they want to interpret it to make the investments they want to invest. And and if you ask Greta. What <laughs> I was just going to mention, Greta, <laughs> is going to be different than other people's view of ESG. It's it's a completely Greta says blah 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 <laughs> blah 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 ESG. 
All 30 right. years, blah, blah, blah. 2030, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> hey, Daniel. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.